Welcome to this little uh, TechNet video. Uh, I'm James O'Neill. I'm an evangelist with uh, Microsoft uh, working here in the UK. And I've got Zane with me, who's visiting us here in the London office. Uh, Zane, it's probably easiest for the camera if you uh, explain what it means to be the Senior Director for Systems Management. Uh, uh, basically, my role covers virtualization, end-to-end, mm -hmm. uh, -end and systems management, and uh, marketing and business for both those products. Okay, so I think people could, could say it's been a pretty good year for us for virtualization. We've, in the last 12 months, we've released Hyper-V, and we've got Hyper-V uh, R2 coming in the next version of Windows Server. But can you talk about the kind of traction we've been getting both with Hyper-V itself and then with the management product uh, system center for sure. machine manager? So the reality is, the, the traction has been getting better uh, since we came. The first few months, uh, I would say the first three months when uh, we released our product, both the uh, Hyper-V server and Hyper-V, and uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, I used to get a lot of um, uh, customer requests or RFPs for 10, 15 servers at a time. And now in the last five, six months, we're getting customer requests for six, 5,000 servers at a time, which tells me that the traction is very high. And then every single survey that we've done with customers shows Hyper-V and our management for virtualization and actually our management for the physical yeah. layer also is gaining a lot of traction in market. And, and I would venture that we are pretty much the fastest growing virtualization platform in market today. Okay, so we, we've obviously got a good springboard because we've got that growth and because we, we've now got credibility uh, with, for, those, for those big accounts. But one of, the, uh, one of the big things that's obviously coming down the track is we've got Windows 7 client, which is getting all the attention. But due to ship simultaneously with that, we've got the new R2 version of Windows Server 2008. Right. And the virtualization pieces in there are, are, are attracting a lot of attention. So what are the things in, in there that are, are kind of your area that are exciting you in Server 2008 RT? So if, if you look at Server 2008 uh, from a virtualization perspective, and, and if you think of it from customers who are virtualizing, uh, the Hyper-V R2 uh, platform provides some great features like live migration, uh, clustered shared volume. So basically you can cluster 16 nodes and have high availability out of the box. And, and the beauty of all that is the customer doesn't have to pay for all those core right. high-end features. Those features are just going to be part of the platform and part of our Hyper-V server which is free. So I think that's, that's the exciting part of, of virtualization from a Windows Server 2008 R2 perspective. Right, because I think for, for people who, who are not clear on the difference, in the first release of Hyper-V we had fault tolerance and we had what we call quick migration. Right. But that meant you couldn't move a, a workload from one, one node to another without some brief interruption. Right. Now we've got live migration where you don't see a, an interruption to service. So that's obviously one of the things that was a, a doubt in people's minds, is just taken away. Right. And actually, it wasn't a doubt. There were some, not all, but there were some scenarios where the, the customer didn't want any disruption. Mm -hmm. And, and th those scenarios cannot be addressed with live migration. But we got a lot of traction because uh, all customers in all scenarios, they need to be, it didn't require live migration. But in addition to that, fault tolerance has been part of Windows Server in a, as a clustering technology for nearly a decade now. Uh, but with cluster shared volume, we go beyond. It provides high availability. So think of it this way. Fault tolerance means if my server is down, I will fail over. That failover has a brief interruption because you're failing over. With high availability in cluster shared volume, there will be no interruption of service. Nothing fails over. They just run and load balance automatically. So actually, it gives you high availability in addition to fault tolerance, which comes from our clustering technology. So it gives the customer everything from live migration, high availability to fault tolerance. It's a complete platform if you think about it from a virtualization perspective. Right. And we've gone a stage further as well with R2 that the, the Hyper-V server product has now got the fault tolerance in, which Previously, the, the free one didn't. Well, now we've got clustering in Hyper-V server. Absolutely, well. including again the shared cluster, uh, shared server volume is up there also, or clustered shared volume. In addition to that, the <clears throat> the exciting part for customers is the management product, the VMM, Virtual Machine Manager R2, will support all the features of live migration and the new storage features, where you can have multiple VHDs mm -hmm. in a LUN and then each VHD can independently fail over, so that even provides more robustness to our platform moving forward. The other very interesting thing that people overlook, yeah. uh, that's extremely exciting in our new platform, is boot from VHD. 
Yeah. So I'm using this one myself, but let, let's explain okay. this for the, for so, the viewers. So as an IT admin in an in a organization, one of the core uh, complexity is the multiple images mm -hmm. that I have to manage as an IT organization. And then, especially with virtualization and physical, I have to have different images for my virtualization VHD format today and for my physical. And that's true if you, and if you have VMware, you have to have multiple images. Well, we've gone a step further by introducing boot from VHD. You can have single image and it'll mount to a physical server or a virtual server and vice versa. So you don't have to manage multiple images. So think about patching. You patch one image and you mount them everywhere. So basically by enabling this reduction in image management, we're going to bring even further TCO than any other virtualization platform in the market. Mm -hmm. So that's an overlooked feature. Yeah. But it is a brilliant thing from an ID uh, admin perspective because it makes their life so much less complex. Now, this idea of having one image that you use many, many times, this obviously comes up in the VDI space. Right. And we've done some stuff in R2 to make the, uh, to, to, to broaden the appeal of, of Hyper-V more into, into the VDI area. That Some people saw it in the first release as very much concentrating on server consolidation with VDI as, as kind of a, 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 almost an afterthought. Now we've, we've brought some of the things in to support VDI. So, so you know, I, I think it is, you have to look at it broadly. I think VDI was going through a hype cycle in the last 18 months. Uh, there were a lot of kicking the tires at customer sites, but not heavy, heavy deployments. <clears throat> in the last few months, it started changing in the last six months. And, and we have some customers deploying uh, VDI on Hyper-V today. Live migration is one of the core features for that. Boot from VHD in R2 is going to be one of the core features for that. And also we have a connection broker that is going to be part of Windows Server 2008 R2 now. And that connection broker, while it will scale pretty well, it's more for departmental and, and mid-sized deployments. And then we have a very close partnership with Citrix uh, and their connection broker that can scale to tens of thousands of uh, VDI images for enterprise-wide deployment. And by having this model where you have out-of-box connection with our product and a, also a partner solution yeah. with Citrix and Quest and others, we have an end-to-end solution for VDI now. Okay, so you, you brought Citrix into the conversation. I think every, every time we bring out a new feature, uh, for whether it's terminal services or whether it's the connection broker, uh, people say, so are you trying to put Citrix out of business now? And we, we've had this very good working relationship with Citrix. Right. But there are other people that we work with in the virtualization area. And uh, I'm curious from, from your perspective what it's like working with those, those different customers, because obviously, just human nature says we're all friendlier terms with some than others. But if you look at what the technologies that we can manage with VMM at the moment, we, we obviously can't manage Citrix with hypervisor yet, right. but we can manage VMwares. So what's, what's the relationship like with those companies, and, and not just those two, they're the most prominent ones, but others? So, I mean, if you think about it from a management perspective, VMware and us compete from virtualization. Yeah. That, that, that is the relationship. We are competitors. Um, and, and the way we manage VMware today uh, is that we, we go through their vCenter product to manage their ESX. And the reason we go through vCenter is because VMware has designed their hypervisor to be very closed and they don't publish the APIs. So you cannot manage their hypervisor directly. Mm -hmm. You have to go through the vCenter. And that means the customer must pay the VMware tax of vCenter, which is thousands of dollars. And, and I think that's one of the reasons they keep it closed so they can have a proprietary model which puts the customer on a treadmill with VMware where they just keep cutting check every time rather than an open model of hypervisor which anyone can manage. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the reasons I think we're getting traction because customers that deploy VMware in the data center are actually creating a virtual island. And, and let me, I'll, I'll give yep. you some perspective on that. So if you have a data center uh, with virtualized, uh, one of the benefits is freedom of movement. Mm -hmm. uh, your VMs can move. So if you have Hyper-V and if you have Citrix, Zen Source, uh, our VMs can move between the two. So if you're load balancing or doing live migration, you just go and you move VHDs as needed. But if you have VMware in the mix, well, that image cannot move off of uh, VMware's hypervisor onto anyone else. It cannot be managed by any other product unless vCenter is in the middle. So the customer has this big VMware tax that they have to keep paying. And I think that openness that we bring to market uh, and uh, with VHD, which is an open format, enables the customer to really take virtualization to the next level mm -hmm. where it's fully open and the best of breed products start winning. And that's why we're getting the traction we're getting. 
that, that covers the, the sort of Citrix and the VMware and the, the management side. Now, customers 